Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode here on the Hermitcraft Mace Fight server. What is that to the side of me? Oh, it's a little smiley face. It's a smiley face floating in the sky. Do you know what that means? We built the snowman on a chunk border. Load. <laughs> there we go. I'll tell you what. That looks so much more derpy and funny to me when it's fully loaded than just that little floaty face. Uh, feedback on that project, by the way. Fantastic. Really glad you all liked it. A few people commented on it being very spherical, and I agree. I mean, it's they're perfect spheres, or as perfect as you can make them with blocks. And you know what? Me and organics on that scale, not really going to happen. So I decided to just do them as spheres. And it ended up looking really cool, I think. If we walk over here, though, you may notice that there are some changes around here. Something's a little bit different with this farm, right? Well, like we've done over here with a path hanging over the edge and this sort of landscaped edge, I've done that going down the side on that side and this side over here as well. Just makes it feel like it's been more dug into the area rather than having some straight walls. The problem with this side is, though, it flattens off at the top here. So really what we need is more blocks behind it and probably for those to go up a couple of blocks as well, right? Not just to go up by one and then have some more landscape over here so it feels a little bit more natural and that's something I'll do at another time. Already you can see that just that little bit alone helps it out so there's still more work to be done on that project but we may or may not be doing that episode. I don't know we're going to be working on a vine farm today and there was a vine farm here before. You may have remembered it was actually somewhere around here I believe like that chest or this chest is the one that used to sit just underneath it and I moved it over here and it got me thinking that actually what I'd probably like to do is rebuild the vine farm, make it a lot bigger so you can get a lot more vines from it. I think when I harvested it a moment ago, why did I go and put the rest of those vines? Oh yeah, I've been doing a little bit of digging around here, seeing what space we have to build and that snow on the ground, that's from the uh, Purpur project. Found the vines, found the vines. I think that you get 74 in total from this. And that's not really a lot if you want to do a lot of building with mossy cobblestone, which I imagine is going to be a popular use for this. So I've been thinking about how we're going to go about harvesting this stuff and doing some testing. The range of the player when you're standing like at the front of a block like that is four blocks across. So if I've got my shears, I can go all the way up to that block, but not the one behind it. Can I actually demonstrate that for you right now? Oh, actually it looks like I can go to the one right behind it. That may or may not be useful because our range there is probably very limited. Anyway, let's discuss how we're going to do this. So when you place down a block, you can put a vine on the front of it. That's great, but this sort of takes up two blocks, right? So if you put a vine on the other side of it, then you get uh, two in three spaces. So if we go and put, oops, <laughs> just destroyed it. If we go and put a block back there as well, you can see that we can get three vines in total in that four block space. So I know some of you are going to say, but it's five. Well, I imagine as soon as we start to aim upwards, we're probably going to lose that because I believe um, the range for the player, it's going to be like an invisible sphere or circle away from the point that they're standing in. Yeah, hopefully that makes sense. I hope. I'm going to say that a lot, aren't I? Because this might be a little bit difficult to grasp. So my idea is that when you're standing in a single point, if you grow the vines like this, you actually stack them back to back. And then you can hold down click and mine through them, right? So if you're aiming at the bottom here, you can go through all of the vines. Right, so let's put that there. And actually, we're not going to have anything at the back. So let's leave it like that. So if I'm the player standing here then I can mine through all of those, all the way to the back and up above me as well. And they're all sort of compressed into this space, which means while you're standing here mining, you're getting a lot more vines for your shears, if that makes sense. And yes, you would also harvest that one there. So then we can go and do the next one. The problem here, though, is that we don't want to get rid of that block. That's like our cedar block for the vines that are going to grow there. So we need to get the range right here. If we go down a block lower, from that position we were standing in a moment ago, we can still hit it. If we go down a block again, we can still hit it. This was such a better idea for testing than what I was doing before. I've put down vines like this, 
and then we go and stand here and we try and mine them all. Now they're on the side of the block but if they are facing towards us the hitbox will be the same going all the way across the front of the block. So these are the ones that you can mine and those are the ones that you can't. So if we make it so our diagonal line sort of intersects with those three blocks then they will have the full hitbox but they won't be able to be mined from the player standing in the correct position. So when the player is standing here the orange blocks are the ones that it can't mine. And remember the cedar ones are going to be bigger. You can see they take up a full block. They're inside the orange bit right there. And it does mean that some of the vines that grow we can't mine, but it means we get to stack them close together. And actually what we're doing is we're stacking five in a row together, which is pretty cool. I think actually what I need to do here is hang some more vines at the top there because they're not going to grow down the front. So thanks to time spent in solitary confinement, my little AFK ho, we've got a whole bunch of vines here to harvest as you can see and I can demonstrate how this is going to work for the player. So we're simply going to stand here and go one by one like that and my shears have broken. Now what I'm thinking is every item that lands on this block the player is going to be able to pick up. The ones that land on the ones behind it we're going to need a water stream to collect those items and bring them to the player. But we'll come back to that in a second. You see the one at the end there? When I was testing this, the hitbox of this was on like the entire part of the block. And I was thinking these vines were at the front. But because we lay it out like this, it actually means that they're at the back. So we wouldn't have this bit right here. In fact, we're going to get rid of it. And we wouldn't have yeah that right there. So this is as far as it's going to go. Now, when we start to aim upwards, we may run into a little bit of a problem here. If we go for the one at the back first, no problem at all. Um, but how can I demonstrate this? As we aim up like this to get the one at the front, we're now aiming at one that's one above the one behind it. If we get that one, we only get one vine and the one below disappears. So it's up to the player to use the farm correctly. And apparently we can't hit that one. I need to redo the test now, don't I? Because they're all in a sort of different position from what I originally estimated. But this is the idea. We'll figure it out and then the player will stand here and just go along and mine everything you know, one at a time like that, and all the vines should drop into water. So, now I'm thinking about the collection system. How do we actually get these items to us? And I had a really cool idea. Uh, where should we do this? You can see there's loads of places here where I've been digging up and testing various things out. We need a bucket of water. And the water is going to flow from the back all the way down there onto that fence post. So, this is where the player is going to stand, right here. And then the water stream behind it is where the vines are going to fall into. So let's chuck our bucket onto that fence post, like so. When it goes up into the sky, it actually means it goes down below. That's a problem with this thing we're going to find out about in a second. Let's try that one more time. Are you going to stay there now? Excellent. Okay. And let's put a block on top of it. So if we're standing here we pick up the items that are on top of the fence post, right? How cool is that? The problem is we chuck in the bucket from back here, it's not going to go onto the fence post. It gets caught on the hitbox difference, which is unfortunate. So you might be thinking what I was thinking was we should have a whole grid of these fence posts and then it would be nice and easy to pick up. Well, the problem with that is, as you saw a moment ago, they have a gap in them. So they are actually going to drop items through. Well, sort of like that one just did. Let's chuck in a couple of more. There you go. So you can see even if they get over the first bit, they'll fall down into the gap behind it. And to pick up my water, I need my bucket back. So we've still got to suss that one out. But there is one more thing to mention, which is that I had a vision of where this thing was going to go. I wanted to use up a lot of space because I really want to focus on getting this area completed. And it doesn't feel like anyone else is particularly interested in, in developing free farms at the moment. So I sort of pictured a U-shape like this where we would leave like a big space in the middle because we're just using a trench around the outside and then it means someone else could come along and perhaps build something in the middle like a feature or something cool or maybe I'll end up doing that. Uh, but this farm is going to be a lot bigger than I thought it would and also we have all of the snow down below which is going to get in the way. So I've been looking at where the snow ends and unfortunately I don't think this is going to work out. You see we need like eight or seven blocks beyond where the snow is. So we as the player don't want to see the snow, meaning that this line right here is reserved for building blocks. The player is going to stand here and then you go forward a few more blocks and it comes out to here. So on this side it's going to work. On the back there is enough room. The problem is the snow ends very close to Ren's farm over there. So we wouldn't be able to have a whole 
U-shape. So I'm probably going to have to throw that idea to the side and come up with something else. Yep, it is not going to work out. I have double or triple checked the numbers, starting building this, and it just will not fit in a U-shape in this area, which is really unfortunate. And I feel like the back of this, where it's going to have all the grass and pods all going over it, would have made a lot more sense when this was like a, a U-shape, as it would have enclosed the middle area. Hopefully we can make it work anyway, because it's going to be like a little bit of a patch of grass, wildlife sort of popping out of a bland mesa. Maybe we won't do that, I don't know. Anyway, this is what it looks like. You can see it takes up a lot of space, and the stone won't really be visible from the other side, but from inside the farm it's going to be very visible. So I had this idea, you may have seen this before, to just throw in the occasional redstone ore. The reason why is because when you put the vines over it, kind of looks like it's berry vines, right? So that's a nice little detail that we can throw in there. So every now and then, one of these is going to be changed to redstone. Uh, this is not the full width for the farm as well. I've still got more digging to do, but this is where it's going to be positioned. So I've dug out all the space that we need. We will be able to build a wall in this space, so we don't have to look at the quartz and the snow. And how much of this we're going to change over, I'm not sure. But I've got a solution for what's going on down below. I thought to myself, okay... Fence posts don't work. What else in this game is similar to a fence post? Of course, we've got the cobblestone wall. And I didn't know about this. The result that I'm about to show you, I was not expecting. And maybe I've learned about this before and just forgotten. But items will actually go all the way over it. There is no gap with cobblestone walls. So they're not going to pop down in between. And that means they'll flow all the way to the end. So that's absolutely perfect. We are going to put cobblestone walls down there. And that's going to solve the water problem. So the upper part of our farm here has been fleshed out with some redstone, also some andesite to break up the stone. But I don't want to go too overboard here and throw in all sorts of materials, so just those two for now. And then I've been thinking about the back and the rest of this farm. I think we want to use stone bricks and a lot of mossy stone bricks as well because that's really going to fit the theme very well. So it's something you'll come here to use a lot. So I think what we want to focus on doing is dragging the stone down with some andesite like this. So we'll have this going down in various places and probably variate it a little bit so it goes up and down, sort of like what I'm doing right now. And then the rest of it will be stone bricks on the same level. Now we've got three different types of stone bricks and we're probably going to use mossy the most. So I'll end up using this farm while I'm building it, you know, so I can craft some more of this. But something like that I reckon is what we're going to end up with. Let's just place a couple more blocks here so we can see where it's going. Maybe a cracked one right there. Oh, and I brought some stairs with me because the occasional little gap like that, always a nice little thing to have in there. And yeah, so that'll be what goes on the wall at the back. Then here is where the cobblestone walls are going to be. So you'll be able to see a little bit of this right here. So we'll make sure the texture goes down to that level. What's underneath it, I don't know, but I thought that might be a cool place to put the light source so that the water is illuminated. That could end up looking really cool. So we're going to need some sea lanterns and we're going to check on how many drops we have in those chests. I was doing some AFK in the other day for a couple of hours and that's a very healthy sight. Wow. Oh my goodness me. Are we, are we backing up up here a little bit? What's going on? Why am I... What? <laughs> why, why am I glitching into a block? That is very, very odd behavior. Look at that. We're backing up. And over here, is it the same on this side? It is, we are backed up again. Oh, that is amazing. I only AFK'd for like a couple of hours and I stood in the middle of the room as well. So that seems to be optimal for the guardians to spawn. Man, I haven't even gone around the caves outside here and lit them all up. Because remember, guardians are part of the hostile mob cap. So that is extremely good. Let's check on all of these. Oh yes, we are backed up again. Can you believe it? <laughs> that is just brilliant. Wow, they are all fully stocked. Do you know what we're going to be doing next? We're going to be crafting an insane amount of sea lanterns. Aw, i got a sad face right now. I really wanted to craft the last sea lanterns on camera. <laughs> and I've, I've just gotten into a little bit of a, a zone here and been crafting away. And can you hear the absolute death going on above me? While I'm sitting here crafting, there's just the sound of guardians dying over and over again. And sometimes there's so many at once, it does make me wonder. This is a very efficient farm, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, let's go over here. Do you want to see how many sea lanterns we've got? <laughs> oh, look at that! Oh, that is an insane amount, and that's from one session. So if I go 
and sit down and AFK again, we will get a whole bunch more of these. However, those chests are actually starting to fill up with all of the stuff that we don't need. It's got my mind ticking over a little bit about what to do with all of the drops that come through there. And I always like new challenges in this game. And I was wondering, what if we were to take one of these and to make it so it keeps enough of the right amount of items just to make the sea lanterns, right? Because we will want to make prismarine as well. Um, but it would be cool to do something like that, I think. It would just be a little bit different, a little bit of a different challenge with some redstone. And I need to come over here soon and work on this, so I need more reasons to get over here. Hi, I've made a new friend, me and my little matey here. Oh, he doesn't like me anymore. Oh, you're coming back! Wait, what are you... <laughs> I think he went in the hole, okay. Well, <laughs> you can stay down there. Oh... We're doing it. We're going to go expensive because it's Hermitcraft. We're going to use all of these sea lanterns right across the bottom here. And I'm going to put some cobblestone walls on top of them. And then I'll probably find out that it looks really ugly after that. And I'll go, oh no. <laughs> Hopefully not. Let's get them placed in and actually have a look. I didn't bring a lot of cobble with me, but I managed to scrape enough to craft all of these. I think we're going to get close to getting all of this filled in. Got another stack of cobblestone walls. But for now, let's hop on top of here. By the way, this wall at the back looks really great. I do like doing these little varied things, and I think they merge quite well. I've actually made a mistake here. It's just become very apparent to me what I've done wrong. We've got a little bit of a solid line between the two. We need some diagonals in there. We need some blocks that break that pattern up, yeah? You see what I mean? I'll go around and do that a little bit more. We probably want to throw in the occasional stone one as well, lower down. So anyway, these sides here will get done later on. What we want to see right now is what this is going to look like. We're all flowing forwards. And we can just hop across like this and place them one after the other. And you know what? You can barely see the sea lanterns, but they are emitting some light through the water. The water's going to lower the level a little bit. And because it's daytime, we can't really see just quite how much light it emits. But that is looking pretty fantastic, I think. Let's go see it from over here. Uh, by the way, these blocks down below, we'll just leave them as is, because no one's going to see them, but we will need a block right here that you go up against, and I'm thinking andesite might be the one, polished andesite even, or maybe I'll scratch my brain and try and think of something a little bit nicer, maybe something to contrast the stone would be a good idea. Also, if you're wondering why this is here, it's because I need to start placing the vines, don't I? I need to get them in place for us to farm them, and that's as far as they go, right? One, two, three, four... And we wouldn't have it here because it would come down directly on top of that. Actually, we would have it there. That's five. Have I, have I missed the point here? Have I done something wrong? Maybe we can't reach the one at the back is how I've done it. <laughs> uh, wow. Way to go. Look, I can't hit that. Let's go and put a block on it. Yeah, there, there's no way I'm going to reach the one at the back. Right, so it's that one there that's useless. We don't want any vine. Ah, that's what I'm looking for. String. Three pieces of string. i got to take a trip back to my base again. And I've run out of vines, by the way, but they grow so fast. It's such a big farm. You're always going to be able to get what you need from it, I reckon. It might take some time, but you'll probably find while you're chopping down the shears from one side, they're growing on the other, right? So I've got to start chopping these down. Here's the problem. They are growing all the way to the back, which we can't actually reach. Oh, it's a zombie siege again. So many zombie sieges when I'm recording on here. <laughs> Um, yeah, and what I noticed is that the vi these vines will grow like downwards and backwards, as you can see right there, it's grown down, so if we plop a string there, it stops that from happening, and I believe they will no longer grow on the back here, which is cool, but then I need to put a row of string across the entire back, so that's something that we will sort out. As for this block right here, haven't had too many interesting ideas, I think I want to stick to the theme, but here's one block from the stone bricks that we haven't used yet, so what we'll probably do is have them like that, we'll have them on this side as well as the base, and then maybe here as well, um, but what is the light level here? Let's have a look, well light 15 from the sky, 6, no, so we need another light source here, otherwise mobs will be able to spawn on that bit, so it will have to be, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe we could do something like this and keep the snow block as part of the build. Alright, it doesn't really fit in or anything though, but I thought this wall probably not going to look great if it's flat. But here was my first idea, I think this would be epic. So, imagine that we've got the cobblestone walls down there, so that the items will still be able to be picked up from above. 
Never mind that then. Yes, of course, the water will knock down the end rods. Here's the idea I had. If we plop them like that, you can walk across them. Really cool, right? Except if you go slow, you actually fall down in the gap in between. So that's like a that's like a walking detector. Are you walking? Yes. Are you holding shift and trying to move slowly? Oh, you've fallen through. <laughs> I know what we're going to do. We're going to put carpets on top of the sea lanterns. So we've got to do a little bit of flying. Got to fly back to the base. And it reminded me, because earlier today I was watching an Iskal video where he spent some time flying around the world and he was doing it in a very different way to how I fly. So I wanted to show you the difference here. Hi. Would some of these hit me already? There we go. And you've got to get a couple to hit you in a row and then look upwards and you can gain some serious height. Now once you've gained some height after hitting yourself a bit, you can go long distance at a slow speed or you can dive down like this and gain absolutely tons of speed. The way Iskow was doing it though, he was sort of flying along constantly hitting himself like that and uh, avoided death there, didn't want to fly into the wall, did I? Hello kitty cat, why are you not sitting down? You've decided to sit on my bed, <laughs> like a true cat, literally like a true cat. Oh, um, yeah, so we come here for some green carpet. So yeah, I thought I'd just mention it as I don't know how all of you do the flying. Oh, we've already got some made up. That's going to be more than enough. You know, when I'm recording and talking, sometimes I don't articulate myself very well. And watching that back, I kind of missed the point that I was trying to explain. So when you shoot yourself in with the boost bow in the back, you basically get a boost forwards, right? And the speed that you gain from that would also take you upwards at the same speed as well. Now when you start to dive down when you're flying from being higher up, you gain far more speed than a boost boat is ever going to give you. So that's why I consider it like a little bit easier to fly up first and then drop down. If you're going a short distance, that's probably going to be slower. But if you're going a long distance, it's probably going to help you a lot. And you don't have to shoot yourself as much, which is really cool. You've probably noticed what blocks I'm holding in my hotbar, haven't you? So I did a test, by the way, in a creative world. A different world from this one <laughs> and uh, it works absolutely fine the carpets they probably make a minute difference to your height which you'll be able to see with free look at that 0 0.625 so you are slightly higher but you still pick up the items so no problems there and in my hotbar you will see that we have some dark prismarine i think this is going to look really good on this wall and what i'm probably going to do is a very simple pattern like this and then interchange it with some stone bricks do i have any of those on me uh, I actually don't, surprisingly enough. <laughs> I've been carrying loads of things around. Yeah, I can't see any stone bricks there. And then we'll do something like that. And maybe throw in some stairs as well and just swap these over and over again. And I think that could work. So we are close to being done with the underside of this project. And at either end, we're actually going to use ladders to get up and down into this thing. And the top, by the way, is going to be covered with glass so that you can't fall down through that gap. Now, what I've been working on at the moment is just highlighting the ones that you can't get at the edge here. This is like a technical thing that probably I'm only ever going to notice. So as they go down, I just double check it and I believe, look at that, we can't hit that one right there and it is in line with that block. So we're going to mark that one as well and that probably means that actually I've got it right now. Just look at that shape right there because I'm pretty sure you can mine that one. Let's give it a go. Or maybe not. One of them is extremely fine, the angle. You have to be facing right into it. So that one not as well, apparently. So I believe that's all of the columns covered, actually. Excellent. So that's how that side will look when it's done over there as well. And then we're going to have ladders to get out of this place. There we go. That means that this part is done for the most part. And now I'm umming and ahhing about what to do on the back here. You see, the original plan was to cover it in grass and shrubbery and stuff like that. And it was also going to go in a U-shape, so it sort of enclosed the centre, which was going to have a feature on it. But now I'm feeling like that's probably not the way to go. It's really going to pop out of this area, and there isn't a lot of that stuff going on in this area anyway. It's very strict to the Mesa, so we're probably going to keep it that way. However, I won't rush into doing anything. I'll wait for your feedback. But I'm thinking what we'll do is simply landscape this clay, like right over the top of it. And if I'd have known that from the beginning, I could have built this three or four blocks lower. But I don't think it's going to be too difficult. As you can see, we've got to bring this over the top a little bit. But we've also got to make it stretch all the way down there. So there's going to be a lot of like slope on the front to cover all of this up. So then we would end up with a little path going 
to the ladder at either end, right? And maybe some instructions somewhere around it and a sign saying vine farm. So for now, we will move our focus to some other things. We've got some grass that's spreading over here. This stuff needs to be turned into a path as it's going to connect to where we shall build our bridge, which I was going to do this episode, but I was really interested in doing the vine farm. That thing has turned out great, by the way. I'm very happy with it. Oh, and over here, did you even notice it? It looks so good, right? I just you know, placed a load of blocks and made this look a little more natural. There are a few more on the other side as well. So now the area around the chorus farm looks really good in my opinion. So I'm very happy with that. And we just got to focus on the paths that lead down to the chorus farm to tie things up around here. I don't know what to do though. I'm really going to have to scratch my head because I do not want to continue the purple going up here to the surface. And there's kind of a nice break here. I don't know, the way it's sort of just goes in with the clay looks so all right but then we need some steps and it just needs a little bit more structure to it you know because the clay although it's a nice building material it is just the natural material as well it's like having your walls built out of dirt so I've got to come up with something that looks decent for that all right I think we got something here and it's a little bit unusual because we have slabs on either side and stairs in the middle I don't know how I feel about that really, it's a little bit odd, but what I wanted to do was show off some cobblestone below each of the wooden planks, but then it meant you had to jump up the whole way, which I wasn't too keen on. So we'll do something like that for now, and you can see the most part of it here. Uh, what's going on though is we've got the oak here so that it matches the path at the top, because this is all going to be path blocks, and what looks good with it is generally oak. So let's put those into place. There we go. Oh, I'll sort that out in a second. And then the other thing is that we've got the cobblestone walls holding up these acacia logs. So it kind of looks like it's holding up the roof a little bit. And we're going to put those in every other one. So right here we'll have five acacia logs going all the way from side to side. And I'm not saying a chat chat at the moment. For those of you that want to know, because there's always a comment about it, the Achacha thing is from Corallus, who used to play on here. And he would say, you know, Achacha instead of... Acacia and it was kind of funny so sometimes I say that and sometimes I say it correctly although now you're probably going to tell me that Acacia is incorrect as well right <laughs> anyway at the bottom we then got some cobblestone like that as support and I didn't need to break that no wait I've done this wrong it needs to go down one block further doesn't it so the cobble will be there walls above it and I've forgotten something I was going to do before I started building this I spent some time in the vine farm which is amazing by the way and I was getting myself some vines funny enough <laughs> because I wanted to put a few mossy cobblestone walls in there so let's craft those up right I'm not sure if it's necessary uh, the moss kinda goes in there okay we'll leave it in there for now looking good I like this but when it comes down to the bottom here it doesn't quite line up with what's going on down there so I might push this all back by one and another thing <laughs> is uh, this doesn't actually look so good. Now that it's all in place, I think I think this idea is a little bit flawed. What we'll probably do is just rip out the slabs on either side and have stairs going all the way up. So this turned out great. I do like how this looks. On this side though, we don't have a path connecting to it. It goes all the way down here and yeah, that's kind of that deal. I think the transition is okay. And also put some furnaces on the edge here to sort of break up the two. So all of that's looking good. And as I've been walking through here, I've been reminded of something. We're supposed to fill up these chests full of fuel. I'm wondering if maybe I should have made these a little bit smaller. Perhaps instead of chests, we should have put droppers there. But anyway, what we're going to fill them up with is blaze rods. And here we've probably got enough to fill up each of those chests. But I might do it the easy way and change them into droppers. Maybe not. We'll see. Yeah, there is a lot of blaze rods all over the place here. I think there's even some chests down here that have them in as well. Maybe there you go, a double chest and over a chest there as well. Yeah, we'll go over there and fill them all up with blaze rods. We got enough. We've got enough to fill it all up with blaze rods. There's actually only four chests. So that's two double chests of blaze rods. And I've probably got another double chest or more back at the base. If you're wondering where I got these from, I do have a blaze farm on the server. And I've just spent a lot of time, a lot of time AFKing there. And so we now have a ridiculous amount. So this thing is fully stocked for anyone who wants to use it. So this project has turned out pretty good. we got to finish off the vine farm in another one though. Have a path come around, connect to this side, another path over there. We need one to go to the chorus farm. Seems like there's just an endless amount of stuff to do. Do you know what? I was meaning to connect this thing up with some redstone actually because we've still got that block over there that needs to have a line go underground and all the way over here and actually reminds me 
Can you see that cobblestone over there? When I was digging on the other side, I broke through into this space and I forgot to go over there and patch that up. So I'll go and do that in a moment, but I wanted to show you the vine farm in action because the vines have now grown a lot. And this thing is just so simple to use, except I can't use the ladder. <laughs> For some reason, I ignored that. And man, the vines have grown. So yeah, you can just come in here and do this. That's it. It's simple. You do have to pay a little bit of attention though. Like if you do that and then mine that one, like I've said before, they will, um, the ones below it will go, but if you know what you're doing, it's really simple to avoid that. And here's another thing I really like. What we're going to do is mine the ones that are a little bit further away and keep moving to the side because when they drop down, they kind of leave like a little bit of a an indicator that they're there. So let's just keep moving to the side. Right, so now if we look along here, can you see on the edge of the carpet there's these little green bobby bits? They were a lot more visible when the carpet wasn't there sort of. <laughs> uh, not the biggest of difference that you can see, but it's definitely a difference. And yeah, it just lets you know that you can sort of walk across and pick up a few more, which is really nice. It's like a detection system for if the vines are there or not. And this thing is just incredibly simple. I'm really happy with how this project has turned out this episode. So that concludes this episode of Hermitcraft. I do hope you have enjoyed it. And if you have, leave a like on the video. As always, thank you for your support. And remember to leave a comment down below, let me know what you think we should do with the vine farm. I really do think that just terraforming it back into a mesa is probably the way to go. But let me know your thoughts, and that's it from me. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.